Thank you for your presence in this place. Father, we thank you that you are a chain breaker. We thank you, Father, that you are a God of more than enough. We thank you, Father, that in your presence is where mountains melt like wax. In your presence is where you make the crooked way straight. So, Father, we say have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you, Father, that, man, you love to show out. And so, Father, we thank you that we're going to move out of your way and let you show out, let you show out. So, Father, in the next 45 minutes, I pray that you do something in this place. Father, I thank you that you're going to do some mountain changing in this place. In the next 45 minutes, Father, open our ears to hear. Lord, any heaviness that we walked in with, Lord, I thank you right now that we can't do nothing with that heaviness anyway. So, Father, we're going to lay it at your feet, and we're going to trust you with it. We're going to shift shoulders with you, and we're going to let our burdens become yours and your strength become ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. What, what, what? Y'all can be seated. Thank you, praise and worship team. Y'all are awesome. I sure do love y'all. All of your dedication. Man, we got like the best church on the planet. On the planet. I'm so glad to be back. So I just preached my last Sunday. I was gone for two, three Sundays in a row, and it felt like the longest three weeks of my entire life. But I'm home for a minute, so what, what, what? I'm home for a while, actually, on a Sunday. I'm traveling all during the week, but I'm home on Sundays, and I'm not going to let that happen anymore because I like to be with my church family, my family of choice. I want you to look at your neighbor right now and say, pass the test. Pass the test already. Pass the test. Ain't you tired of being stuck on silly? Ain't you tired of letting stress wear you out? Ain't you tired of worrying about your money? It ain't putting no money in your checking account anyway. Pass the test already. Today we're going to talk about spiritual tools to help you overcome the storms of life. Because as long as you are alive, you're going to go through some things. You know what I'm talking about? As long as you got a pulse, you're going to go through some things. I hate to tell you that, but the cool thing about knowing Jesus is that when you go through those hard times, he's given you the strength to make it all right. He's given you the wherewithal to dance your tail all over your storms. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you something. I, I literally believe with all of my heart that, that what I preach works. I don't come up here and preach anything that I ain't walked through myself. I don't preach anything that I hadn't already passed. I pass some tests. You hear me? I pass some tests every week just for you so that you can make it through, so that I can preach it to you, so you can make it through. Tonight, our scripture is going to be Revelations 12 and 11. Revelations 12 and 11. And uh, it's, it's going to be good. I need y'all to get your phones out, whatever you got to do to get some notes down because y'all are going to take some notes so that this week during your, your devotion time, you got some stuff. That's what I try to do on Wednesday nights. I try to give y'all some stuff that you can eat off of during the week. You know what I'm talking about? Because a lot of times, you know, uh, we are the type of people that we will get stuck in the season because sometimes we just don't know what to do. You know what I'm talking about? Like sometimes it's just taking the life out of us, and, and it's almost like uh, things happen all at once. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you're just going to lose one thing. You're going to lose a lot of stuff. You're going to have to go through some stuff, and if you aren't careful and you don't learn how to shift your thinking, you're going to stay stuck in that season. So you've got you to gotta know how to shift your thinking. And Revelation 12 and 11 says, and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. You got to realize that whenever you leave this place, you're going somewhere better. Amen. God has you in that test that you're in right now to build your testimony. And a lot of times what you do in the valley, how are you going to do it? You're going to praise your way through or are you going to be mad? <laughs> but either way, you're going to have to get through it. And a lot of times until you learn how to pass that test, you're going to stay there. Because God needs you to pass the test. Because if you can't even pass a test down here, how's he going to trust you with what he's given you up here? Because you're going to fall apart every time adversity comes. 
No, you need to learn how to understand that this testimony, stop praying for God to change your test, your test, and begin to pray that God gives you what you need in that test that's going to make you drip with oil. You know, I talk about that all the time. How are you going to pass that test? How are you going to pass that test? Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Sometimes you got to look in that mirror and talk to yourself and say, self, today you ain't going to be pitiful. You're going to be powerful today. Self, today you about to, you're about to climb some mountains. Get your, get your work boots on with some good grip on it. All right? And learn how to fight, man. Fight your way through. Come out better. Learn to praise instead of complaining. Learn to praise. I ain't never seen complaining fix nothing. It don't put no money in your account. It don't change your kid. It don't change your friends. It don't get you a job. It don't make your health better. You know what it does? It makes you sick inside. Complaining brings forth poverty in your life. Critical, a critical spirit brings forth poverty. That's how come people can work two and three jobs and still not have enough money. You know why? Because you're prophesying out of your mouth every day because you're hanging around with blood suckers. You're hanging around with some joy drainers. You're hanging around with some peace stealers and you won't let them go because you're afraid to be by yourself, honey. I would rather be by myself any day than hang around with somebody that is reminded me how bad life is. Uh -uh. I want to hang around with some people that are contagious, got some Jesus juice on them. Learn to praise instead of complaining. Because we serve a God that where karma should get us, God rescues us. We serve a God that where karma should get us, grace rescues us. That's the kind of God we serve. Have you forgotten your testimonies? You must remember where you were to get to where you are. You got to learn how to start telling your... I ain't telling my testimony. I don't want nobody looking at me like I'm crazy. I know I was crazy in that season, so we're just not going to talk about that silly, that silly stage. No, you better learn how to open your mouth and begin to tell your testimony because something happens whenever you start telling your testimony. I'm so transparent that you can write anything. Anybody can get mad at me and say anything they want about me, and all y'all going to be like, oh, yeah, she already told us that. Oh, yeah, she used to dance on the bars. Uh -huh. I had clothes on, but I was still up there. <laughs> oh, yeah, she used to drive home with one hand over her eye. She was silly, man. That girl, she, she couldn't keep no relationship. She, she drove her ex to drink. Uh, she, she had no friends because she didn't trust anybody. Man, I got stories after stories that I've already told everybody. And, and every single week, it seems like God gives me another something to tell. I'm like, oh, gee, I forgot about that. <laughs> But my testimony of what I made it through is helping millions get through. Because the body of Christ is tired of, 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 of these people that act like they ain't never done nothing wrong, okay? We all want to know that you got a limp. We want to know that you made it through something because when you make it through, that means you can help me make it through, okay? Because I'm going to go through a season where it might be, some of y'all been in that dark season way too long. Y'all been nursing that wound for way too long. And it ain't going to just go away, okay? God is not a genie in a bottle. He's not just going, Broop. no, you got to start laying hands. Come out, lay hands on yourself and make a choice, man. Make a choice to shift your trajectory. My conference named this year because this is the year where God is talking to me. I get a word every year. Last year, I said, God, what is my word for this year? It was be intentional. This year, it's change your trajectory, okay? My conference this year is called Collide. Collide. You know why? Because it's prophetic. When you learn about how your life, everything in your life is part of your story. Every single storm that you created is part of your story. And whenever you get to that place where you ain't running from it no more, and you begin to allow your purpose and destiny to collide with the anointing on your life, things begin to shift. God is waiting for you to tell someone about that last thing he did for you. We quick to prophesy about what he's going to do, but God wants you to tell about what he did do already. Go on and tell him about, oh, yeah, I didn't have any money in my account for the last six months. I thought I was going to get evicted, but he came through in the midnight hour. I don't know why he waits. Oh, but he waits. I don't know why he waits until the clock strikes 12, but he does. You know why? To teach us that he is a faithful God, to teach us that he is going to come through, that he ain't going to leave you or forsake you. Any of y'all got, uh, uh, got a God, if you would, kind of prayer? We always pray them prayers, too. Like, God, if you'll get me out of this, then I'm never going to miss church again. As soon as he got you out, you ain't done one thing you said you were going to do. And you still now you're praying for another miracle. No, he wants you to go do what he told you to do before. 
I need you to get back over here and make it through something. You hear what I'm saying? I need you to then tell people about what I made, made, helped make you through. Many are claiming a new level they'll never reach because they are dishonored. They, they, they dishonored the person that was assigned to get them there. Living in the Lord if you would. When you don't understand the value of relationships and the necessity of honor, you stay stuck in claiming but never obtaining. You claiming it, but you ain't never going to obtain it. Some of you are stepping on the person God sent to bless you, trying to get to a person that won't even ever help you. Hmm. I'm about high five of myself. Perhaps you have heard the saying, into each life, some rain must fall. Well, what if what you are experiencing is more of a deluge? I've observed that trial comes in numbers. People of faith know sprinkles, but we also know full-blown storms. I've recently heard stories like this. Maybe you have too. I have cancer. My husband lost his job. I'm desperately overwhelmed. My life is full of good things, but I can't enjoy them. My son needs more therapy and is struggling to adjust at home school. Home and school. He's just crazy. When rain, when rain is falling in my life, I like to turn to the story of Noah. In Genesis 6, 9 through 7, uh, 6, uh, 6, 9 and 17, it says, he knew a storm. In fact, he knew one that was so long and so strong that it virtually wiped out everything around him. Because Noah had no choice but to trust in God for his, his very survival. His story serves as powerful inspiration for us. The thing that most impresses me about Noah is his faith. To often, it, so often it's easy to think about our faith solely as an internal anchor when we hit hard times. But that wasn't the case for Noah. His was accompanied by, by the building of a huge physical ark. This external ark was illustrative of his internal life. It was a tribute to his obedience to God, the very thing that saved him. I see God highlighting the importance of physical steps that we can take through our storms in Noah's story. James is so honest when he claims faith without works is dead. James 2 and 17. We can't do the work of, the, of God, but we can seek Noah's same kind of bold obedience to honor the one with our own life as a raft. The very thing, the very storm that took the world out was the thing that saved Noah. Took the whole world out, but it saved Noah. I'm having a hard time reading because I just got bifocals. Oh, Lord, old age. I got bifocals, so what I can do is I can see good this way, and I can see good this way. But I'm having a hard time getting used to it, so y'all bear with me, all right? Just as Noah used everyday tools to build the ark, there are everyday spiritual tools that we can employ to successfully navigate adversity. Those tools formulated as simple steps, and I'm fixing to give them to you. You ready? This will help us honor God in the midst of life storms. This is the ability to have faith and trust God even when we can't trace him. I'm going to give you the steps of right now you feel like you're suffocating and you feel like you're in the storm and a fight for your life. I'm about to give you some things that you need to do in order to get out of it, all right? Number one, you've got to stand on God's promises. You got to stand on his promises. You got to stand on his promises. Mind the Bible for encouragement, particular to your situation. Claim those promises allowed by faith at least once a day. It's not a coincidence that the ark was floating on water. Sometimes scripture is our only solid ground to stand on that keeps us from sinking. It can and will keep us afloat. That's why we have a Bible. Because the Bible is our manuscript. The Bible is our pie pie spinach. The, pie pie, the Bible is that thing that when you ain't got a prayer and you ain't got nothing to pray, you open that Bible and say, God, you brought me to it. You're going to help me get through it. You know, God, I know that you must trust me a whole People, I hear people say, I just wish God didn't trust me so much. You need to stop saying that. Because God trusts you because he knows there's something inside of you that you don't even see. He's trusting. There's something on the inside of you 
And without, you're like, I just wish I didn't have to go through this. If those people that hurt you, that, that betrayed you, if they took back what they did to you, you wouldn't know the strength that you have in your life. It was all a divine setup. Because God is saying, you've been in a dry season. You've been in storm after storm after storm. And you're like, ah, ah. You're just finding, oh, my God, you don't want to get out of bed. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you just feel like you're being hit on every side. When you begin to realize and thank God for that storm that he trusts you, man, he trusts you with that. And begin to start praying, Father, let me see. Let me feel. Man, I'm telling y'all something. People ask me all the time, and I tell y'all this, how did you get to the place where you're at? I promise y'all something. What you see here is what I am at home. I ain't scared of no ghost. I ain't scared of no nothing. You hear me? I, I used to have the tax people would come after me. It's almost like the police car we talked about. You know what I'm saying? Not no more. I'm like, God, you got, I got these taxes. <laughs> that's a lot of money. I owe last year I owed $20,000. Oh, that's a lot of money. That means I'm making more money. You see what I'm saying? And so what you got to do is, is start realizing that this right here is my life, college, my school. And God, I'm not going to detest the storm anymore. I'm going to start dancing on it. Because I know that the more the storm's coming, the greater the blessing, the greater the anointing, the greater the victory, the greater the story. See, God's got to let it get real bad so he got something to show out in your life with. If it was one of those little petty miracles, ain't nobody care about that. Oh, well, I got this. You know, and headaches are bad. I know they are. But no, man, we, when a tumor gets healed, <laughs> there's something about a tumor, man. There's something about breast cancer. There, there's something about when you lose something in your life and you feel like, and all of a sudden God blesses you. All the anointing, you ain't, it. the more storms you conquer, the more your faith is built. Some of you weak. Because every time a storm comes, you fall apart and talk about the storm. Stop talking about it and start prophesying over it. Storm, <laughs> you can't touch us. Nah, nah, nah. You can't touch me. You should have went and picked on somebody else. Sickness, you should have went in somebody else's body. Because I'm going to make it through this thing. You hear me? And when I do, I'm going to have the loudest mouth in the south. And I'm going to be telling everybody, oh, let me tell you what my God's done. Let, let me, oh, you should have picked on somebody else and messed up somebody else's marriage because God's going to bring me somebody and we're going to be a power couple. Oh, it ain't over. <laughs> Number two, to get through storms. Number one, we stand on God's promises. Well, I don't really know what God's promises are. Well, you better start Googling it. Some of you are falling apart every time the storm comes because you ain't reading your Bible. You better start putting in Google, what are the promises God says about my life? You will see a thousand scriptures pop up. And there's something about every time the enemy gets fear in your life, that fear that paralyzes you, right? Is when you start quoting them promises, all of a sudden you feel like you go, you go from this oh, to... <laughs> what? I feel strong, man. What? You ain't got a pot to pee in. And you over here, won't he do it? Won't he? Because you know that with God, in the end, it always turns out all right. So if it ain't all right, it ain't the end. It ain't the end, baby, because you're going to be all right. In fact, you ain't just going to be all right. You're going to be better than all right. You got a story, man. Now, when things start coming at me, I'm like, bring it on. Because <laughs> I know the harder the adversity, the greater the blessing. So I'm like, come on. Come on. I ain't scared of you. Let's go. Let's box today, you devil. Let's go. One of my favorite quotes, thieves don't rob empty vaults. Some of y'all need to stop saying, I just wish I'd get a break. You don't want no break. Because every time those storms come, something about to happen. If you ain't got no storms, you ain't no threat. You better start shaking up some stuff. I remember one time somebody told me they were like, you, you, you got to have some haters. And I really believed I didn't have any. And I was like, oh, I ain't got none. I really didn't feel like I had any because I feel like they're just confused fans. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, if they knew me, they'd like me. You know what I'm saying? Threaten people, threaten people, hurt people, hurt people, but heal people, heal people. I didn't really feel I had any. I promise you probably the next month, all of a sudden, I started getting all these haters that were coming out after me. And I was like, oh, oh. You know what I did? Won't he do it? Won't he will? I must be going somewhere. So bring it on. Number two, you got to pray without ceasing. Number two is pray without ceasing. Some of you don't pray no more because you're tired. The devil can't take you out, so he's trying to wear you out. Pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. I see this encouragement playing out in two ways. First, we can pray individually to God throughout the day. That's like an ongoing dialogue of sharing and listening to him. I love how the Bible demonstrates God specifically instructed Noah in order to save him. God will faithfully give us guidance too. Second, we can come together with one or more fellow believers to lift up pressing concerns together. It's amazing how the latter unleashes God's spirit today because one will put a thousand to flight, two will put ten thousand. That's why you got to pay attention who you're around. You need some people that can pray over your, your petty tale. Sometimes you're just a petty tale. And sometimes you need somebody to help you pray over yourself. Okay? Help get that pettiness out of you. Because petty tail ain't getting you nowhere. You need somebody that's looking at you saying, nah, your attitude stinks. You're busted. You're mean. I'm going to need you to, oh, yo, there's people in here be like, block. Man, I married somebody that I'm always like, girl, you better get yourself together. Because he'll tell me in a heart. He, he'll come put his arms around me and pray, Father, I thank you this petty spirit's coming I want to put my fist in his face. <laughs> He'll even look at me. He'll say, what's wrong with you today? I ain't said a word. Leave me alone. <laughs> and it's like he's doing this to me. <laughs> he won't leave me alone. He said, there's something wrong with you today, and you need, to get, you need to get this straight. You need to get this fixed. Now, the old Kim used to be like, I had to cut him with my words. Not no more. It's like every time I try to say anything disrespectful, it's like... Because he's God's favorite. You hear me? Because he's my head. And I got people around me, buddy, that hold me accountable. You hear me? That man right there all by himself hold me accountable. I mean, woo, he's the sweetest thing ever. I appreciate you, baby. He lets me travel, man. He holds me up. He encourages me this week about day three, traveling and preaching. Man, I was tired. And he would called me. He said, baby. Have I told you how proud I am of you? Who can travel like you at 45 years old, jumping from plane to plane, preaching every night in a different place, which means I walk into different spirits, okay? It's like at our church, I know y'all, okay? I know your facial expressions. I know when something's weighing on you because you my people, right? You, we, we family of choice here. But when you're walking into different places with brokenness, it's you. And he says, baby, have I told you how proud I am? He said, girl, you bad. All of a sudden, I felt like I just had my Popeye spinach. I went from <gasps> to what is it? I I went and preached my tail off because you got to put some people around you that can feel in the spirit. You are, you are, you are dragging. You, you got to put some people that are recognizing that you need some encouragement, man. I can even tell with my mama, man, my mama, she got, carries a lot on her plate. And I can tell when she's heavy, I'll be like, let's get out of the house. Let's go do, you need people that know you in the spirit. That's why I tell you again, I'm going to tell you probably five more times, you better pay attention who you're hanging around with. Because I promise to God, you will become what you hang around. You cannot hang around with a gossiper and not gossip. You can't. Y'all need to stop going to Starbucks with them every Friday. I mean, pay attention to your heart. Being, being depressed ain't getting you nothing, man. Get around some joy. Get around some people that are infectious. People that, are, when they get in your presence, you don't even know what, they ain't got to open their mouth. They just like, <laughs> all of a sudden, you're like, man, I just want to stay in their presence. You, you even get real quiet so they don't kick you out because <laughs> you just want to stay in their presence. That's the kind of people, there are people, I'm like that. Y'all, y'all get my presence. I will, I will either drive you nuts or you're going to get a little bit of my joy juice. 
but I will not be the one changing. <laughs> Hyper is my middle name. People ask me all the time, they're like, how do you have this? Like, how do you do this? Like, even Angel, she's like, because she travels with me. She sees me all the time. She's like, I, I will be, she'll be dragging behind me. And I'm just like, brr, 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 brr. she's like, what? I, I got to get on this keto thing you own, something. I'm like, no, you know what? It's a choice. Every day when I wake up, it is a choice. When I wake up and want to lay in that bed, I start getting in that mirror and talking to myself. Girl, you bad. Girl, you look fine today. Girl, you are a world changer. You're a game changer. Girl, you are all that in a bag of chips. You, I talk to myself because happiness is a choice, and it's your choice. It'll do more for you than Xanax or Ambien. It'll do more for you than, than alcohol and drugs, It'll, and you won't never got a hangover. Pray without ceasing. Stand on God's promises. Number three, affirm your faith with praise. Affirm your faith with praise. Whether we've traveled safely through the storm or are still in it, God delights in hearing our thanksgiving and praise. Paul, who had been bitten, been beaten, shipwrecked, and imprisoned, knew this principle. That's why he encourages each of us to always petition God with thanksgiving. And see Philippians 4 and 6 for that. Doing so reminds us of the goodness of God and strengthens our faith. I love the story about Paul. He used to be Saul. He was a bad, bad boy. He was a Christian killer. And he literally, when God came in and changed his name to Paul, he then still had all the consequences. You know what I'm saying? But with every single thing that happened in his life, even when the shipwreck happened, they were taking him to prison. The shipwreck happened. And he was like, God, uh, uh, well, if we, they, they telling us if we get on that water, we about to die. We're going to die tonight. What you going to do about that? God said, they going to die, but you ain't. <laughs> Now, when that storm started coming, and I could just see the storm, you know, when it's shaking your house, you know, Irma came shaking your house. At that point, you got to realize, God, I don't know how you're going to keep me safe, but you're going to keep me safe in this because you said, and I know it ain't my time to die because I still got purpose on me. And so I'm going to need you to give me some peace. You can lay down when Irma's gone and sleep and know that God's got your back. When that shipwreck started coming, I bet you the screws were popping out of that boat and that thing was falling apart. People were falling overboard. They couldn't even see in front of you because of the storm. And you know what? He knew because God said, I got you. Even in that storm, he said, I don't know how. I bet he was tired. Got him a little piece of that boat and just kind of coasted. Couldn't see his hand in front of his face. When storms like that come, you got to trust God. Because if not, you're going to go nuts. Affirm your faith with praise. Affirm your faith with praise. Turn on Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. My God, that is who you are. And just keep singing that over and over until all of a sudden all that doubt's gone, all the fear is gone. You ain't worried about nothing. The whole world's like, why are you still praising God? What? I keep trying to find me another song to replace that because I know y'all tired, but it's still my favorite. So we're going to keep singing it because I'm going to tell you something. You got to learn to prophesy over yourself. And when the storms of life are hitting your tail, you ain't got nothing to hardly say. You know what I'm saying? You like all you see is the creditors. You see them bills come and that stamp on the front that says important. Don't ignore 800 number calls coming like every day. And every time they come, you're like, oh, like they're going to steal your birthday or something. Then you're going to go get a high blood pressure test because your blood pressure's up because you're stressing, not realizing that these people can't take your birthday. You got to learn at some point to begin to pray over yourself specifics. Father, give me the wisdom to know what to do in this storm. Give me the wisdom. Man, when I lose something, I literally, my husband lost all his credit cards the other day and I was like, oh gosh. Oh my gosh, like what's he going to do? And you know what I did? He was just running around. I don't, I don't know where my credit cards are. I, 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 I got to go back to the DMV. I'm like, dude, they, you, they here. You know what I did? I said, Father, show us. Take us to 
the credit cards. What did I do? I walked right to the credit cards. Because the Holy Spirit, that's why we got to talk to him so we know his voice. See, we don't talk to him until the storms come. And then we ain't ready when the storms come. And so, no, you got to begin to talk to him now so you know his voice. And I found it. They were wrapped up in his pants. What did they, why did he wrap them in his pants? Huh? And he, no, he never puts anything there. There they were wrapped. I was like, I just walked right over to him and I went. I said, and I felt big and bad. I was like, hey. <laughs> How'd you find it? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's why whenever you're going through stuff, man, you're like, the Holy Spirit got this. I don't know how you're going to do it. Because <laughs> I'm losing everything. But I know he ain't going to wreck his reputation on me, so I'm just going to sit here and praise. Waymaker, miracle. Okay, God. The next thing you got to do is keep showing up. Keep showing up. You can't allow that depression to keep you bound. You can't allow those people lying on you to keep you bound. You can't allow the red in your checkbook. <laughs> you can't quit tithing. Oh, I need that extra 10 cent on a dollar. No, you better, you better give that 10 cent. Because, honey, I'm going to tell you something. You keep being faithful, and then all of a sudden the windows of heaven open over your life, and God begins to blow your mind, then you can pay 20000 in taxes. <laughs> My husband used to say all the time, I welcome taxes because that means I'm making more money. I'm thinking, don't you put that on me? Well, it came on me because we're one flesh. But I guess I paid it off because I got a check yesterday back from the IRS for $2,068. Praise the Lord. I didn't miss one ounce of sleep over it. Show did not, but I bet you got me a better tax person. <laughs> I bet you I fired that old one. <laughs> I got some wisdom, okay? I was like, peace out, dude. This ain't never going to happen again. Because, you know, they, they all, all, all for you until you got to pay something. And then they're like, I don't know. I, I, it's not, I didn't make all that money. Well, why weren't you paying? But thank God I didn't go to jail. <laughs> no, I'd never go to jail. I got integrity. Integrity. I like to pay more so I can get a surprise at the end of the year. I pay my tithe, so I ain't worried about nothing. And we give over and above, don't we? The biggest tithers in this church, man. We leading the way. You got to keep showing up. Large feats begin and end with small steps. The massive ark was built one piece of chiseled wood at a time. Every day that we are faithful in the small things... We are opening the door for God to do something incredible that we cannot. We must take the concrete actions that only we can do to see our situations through. I'll never forget when I was walking through my divorce. And some of y'all have told this story, so you won't get to hear it again. But some of you haven't. I walked through my divorce in 2006 and was losing everything. And lost my house, my $500,000 house. Um, my Mercedes lost everything. Me and my two sons in 24 hours had to get out of our house, move from Orlando, Florida to Atlanta, Georgia, move back in with the very, my mother that I, I ran and got married at 18 to get away from. <laughs> and here I am having to move back in with my parents in a little 10 by 10 bedroom the size of my old walk-in closet with nothing but a U-Haul. And in that season, I remember God told me, he said, Kimberly, one ounce of obedience is going to do more for you than all the prayer in the world. You've made a mess of your life, girl. That was like getting a dagger, you know what I'm saying? Because when you got to look at it and be like, man, ain't nobody did this but me. Like, I did this. When you finally own your truth, then God can start shifting some things in your life. But you can't be in denial, blaming the whole world for why you are where you are. Uh-uh. Honey, when you get to heaven, guess what? God ain't going to look at nobody else. He'll only look at you. you got to learn how to own. Why do I keep repeating these cycles? And that's what I did. I began to lay hands on myself and say, Father, start showing me what I need to do to start changing. Because what happens is when you've done something the same way for so long, it's hard to shift. And so you got to pray for God to help you shift. 
God, I need to learn how to get myself. I, I need to stop stabilizing what you're trying to shake me free from. I, I need a breakthrough in my life, and I'm sick of going back. I get happy for about 48 hours, and then I'm right back in the hole again. That is because you are not renewing your mind, you're not spending time in the Word, and you're not speaking life over yourself every day. You're not doing any of the things I'm telling you. And until you begin to learn how to pray your way out, you will stay one day up, one day down. Don't we want people to make it? I mean, some of y'all know right now you can envision somebody that it's always everybody else's fault. You can't keep no job and it's everybody else's fault. Always, always, can't take account, can't, can't be accountable. You got to start praying in the season, Father, help me see with different eyes because my future is bright and I don't want to miss it because I'm being petty. You got to keep showing up. I remember in that season, I lost everything. God told me, he said, if you obey, I will open the windows of heaven over your life, but you're going to go through some, some hard times. Now, that, that's almost like, ugh. I already, there's nothing else you can do to me. You know, when you think you've hit rock bottom, you think, I ain't nowhere. I, I'm as low as I can go. Oh, but there's a little bit lower you can go. And you're like, dog. I thought I was at the bottom. Oh, no. Until you get to a place where you're really ready to allow God to do something, he will keep letting you get lower and lower. And one day you're going to finally get sick of it. But don't, don't, don't stay there for so long that you, get, you lose all these years because you won't get rid of your pride. Man, I started getting rid of my pride, God. Let me walk in forgiveness. I did it all. I was like, if I got to go through the valley, I'm going to go through the valley all at once. I want to get rid of my pride. I want to get rid of people pleasing. I want to get rid of the anger, the bitterness, the hardness. Man, I started looking like 20 years younger. I looked old as dirt because I was angry at the world for what I did. Man, when I finally got free... I remember God told me, them 800 numbers were calling me. We had somebody come by my house so I didn't lose my credit. They were an investor. They bought my house. It was like when I started doing what God wanted me to do, things started falling into place. Now, it hurt like hell. I ain't even going to lie. Losing everything like that, but God was protecting me while I was going through hell. You see what I'm saying? While I was facing the consequences of my actions, he was allowing me to get better. He was allowing me. He was saving me even though I couldn't breathe. You know what I'm saying? I was losing like, ah. But I, all, I, I didn't even notice uh, how he was helping me because I was too busy trying to keep my breath. And then later I looked down and I'm like, God, you came through, man. How, how did you send somebody in a TARDIS to buy a $500,000 house? Like as soon as we were about to pull out up with our U-Haul, somebody with a nasty TARDIS pulls up in my gated community because I was going to lose my house. I couldn't pay it. I lost everything. And, and pulls up and says, are y'all selling this house? What? What would ever make you think we're selling our house? There is no sign in the yard. There is no, no, there's, there's no, it looks like we're having a yard sale is what it looks like, but God, because when you make up your mind that I am standing firm, I ain't budging God. I'm going to learn how to serve and I'm going to learn how to dance. And I know you're taking care of every situation. Sent somebody to buy my house. And then I get back to my mom and dad's and even my daddy goes, this is too good to be true. I was like, where's their faith? Where's your faith? Well, we'll see in 30 days. <laughs> well, in 30 days, that car, that house was out of my name, and I didn't owe. My credit didn't get bad. But then all of a sudden, the creditor started calling me about the other stuff because I had bills like this high, and I wouldn't even open them because I couldn't pay them. And every time I'd open them, I, my heart would start pounding, right? And so I wouldn't even open them. My dad and mom walked in my house to move me, and there was bills like this high. I was in hell. My ex wasn't stepping up. It was like, man, we were just, we lost it. We started aspiring because God will get your attention. When you got a call on your life, he will get your attention, baby. And until you get obedient, he ain't going to storm, storm. You ain't going to die. But boy, you're going to go through it until you get your stubbornness in control. Then I moved back in with my mom and daddy. And oh my God, like, like creditors started calling me 1 800, 1 800 number, 1 800. And I heard God say, Answer the 1 800 number. I said, Oh, I ain't answering that. Oh, no, I know I can't pay it. Well, I answered if I can't pay it. God said, you better answer the phone next time it rings. I was like, ah! 
Oh, here comes that 800 number. I was just blocking them. I was blocking them, blocking them. They kept coming anyway. Hey, find another way to get me. I was like blocking them, blocking them. Finally, one day I answered and they said, ma'am, do you know you owe blah, 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 blah. I was like, yes! They said, well, what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to wait for you to give me a loan so that I can pay you so you'll quit calling me. Because everything inside of me wants to pay you. But I just walked through this devastation. I've lost I told them everything. (laughs) Because I'm the one, I'm going to tell you every detail, honey, because I'm hoping that there's some pity in there. Finally, they said, well, what can you do? What you going to do about it? I said, I can pay you $5 a month. They said, okay, we'll take that. I went, bah. I said, does this mean you ain't going to call me no more? They said, nope, unless you don't pay your $5. And I heard God say, now watch what I'll do. Because one ounce of obedience will do more for you than all the prayer in the world. The next three months, I paid $15. $5, $5. I never missed it. And on the third month, I get a bill in the mail. And it said, debt consolidated. Because see, here's the deal. God can't bless you. You can stand up here all you want for debt consolidation. But if you own the naughty list... God can't do nothing. See, these companies, they got these kind of accounts where they can write stuff off for you. And God's such a big God, he can make sure your name's on there because you have been faithful. You are doing. No, you got to allow your character to be built in the fire or you will keep repeating those cycles. Then last year, my husband calls me and he says, Kim, I didn't, I didn't tell him because I didn't think it was any of his business when we got married that my credit was... Ugh. I didn't think I was any of his business, so I didn't tell him. I couldn't even buy no cheese with my credit, okay? He said, Kim, you know, now that we're pastors of the church, y'all, our credit is what's on this church, okay? Our name. And I was like, ooh, what you need me to do? He said, I need your social security number. I said, no, you don't. I said, all the blood leaving my body. I said, no, you don't need my credit, honey. I, I wanted to say, you really don't need my credit. He said, baby, I need your, because when he gets firm, he gets firm. He said, I need it right now. I was like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I said, well, you going to use it? No, they just need it to put it on the, on, the, on the finances. The next day, he said, come on, baby. Now, we're going to the dealership. I need you to go with me. Why are you going? Why do I need to go with you? You said my credit wasn't being used. He said, get in the car all the way to the dealership, all the way on the other side of town. And my heart is pounding out of my chest. And I'm thinking he's about to find out. We get to that place. And they say, Kimberly, he didn't even have to go in there. They said, Kimberly, can you come back here and sign some papers? I was like, and everybody in there knew who Real Talk Kim was. Because they follow me on social media. And I'm like, they're about to find out that my credit stinketh. <laughs> they said, Kimberly, can you come back here? So I walked back like I was going to the principal's office. And I just kind of sat down there shaking. I said, what do you need? <laughs> they said, we need you to sign right here. And they just put a circle over the red pen. I said, well, what's that? They said, girl, we didn't even need your husband's credit. You could go buy as many cars and houses as you want. You got at the top of the limit of credit score. What am I saying? I got busy doing what I was supposed to do, getting myself right, getting myself in order. Even in the seasons when I didn't want to, I still stayed consistent with my tithe. Yo, I used to didn't pay my tithe either because I was like, I'm a single mother. I can't tithe. I would get tickets for pullover law. Like, what is a pullover law? My daddy would say, baby, you know your daddy never tells you anything of what to do. He sure didn't because I wouldn't listen. He said, but God going to get his money. You know how much that ticket was? $550. Daddy said, I dare you to start tithing and see what will happen. He said, and it's cheaper than those tickets you keep getting. Sure enough, when I started doing what God says to do, in his word, just obey what the word says. The next thing that you got to do, y'all ready? The last one. These are spiritual tools to help you overcome the storms of life. Number five, believe in miracles. You got to believe in miracles. Sometimes we hope for a miracle and it doesn't happen. 
But sometimes we hope for a miracle and it does. I recently talked with a friend whose husband is now free of terminal lung cancer. Tearfully prayed for him together. He underwent a clinical trial successfully and his recovery is nothing short of a miracle. You got to take the limits off of God. You got to open the door for him to work. Noah was willing to risk everything when he did. Noah looked stupid. People talked about him because of his crazy faith. What has God told you to do that you ain't done, that you're scared of? That thing that seems impossible because he always makes us do some crazy stuff. Is he waiting on you maybe to put a praise on it? Is he waiting on you to learn how to praise him on credit? Is he waiting on you to change your thinking? Some of you got such stinky thinking, that's why your life looks like it looks. You laying in bed every night and can't even sleep because you're over here trying to be the CEO of your world and it ain't helping nothing but making you grumpy and yelling at your kids and husband the next day because you are worried sick about something that you can't even control. You got to get to a place where you learn how to praise him and say, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I trust you. I believe in you. And I know that you have got me covered, God. I know that it may not be okay today. It may not be okay tomorrow, but I know with you, all things work together for your good. And I know that in Philippians 4:13, you said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I'm about to serve. So father in this place. I thank you, God, that right now, moving in this place, God, you are shifting our perspective. You're shifting our thinking. You're taking our hopelessness and giving us hope. You're taking our scars and you're turning them to stars. Father, I thank you right now and decree and declare that, Father, you said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And, Father, I thank you that we aren't going to be picking up those weapons and using them on ourselves either. Father, I thank you that we're not going to charge on credit cards and we ain't got no money to pay. That, Father, we're going to live our life to the best. We're going to wake up every day and ask you, Father, to give us our assignment. And, Father, we're going to stay focused on that assignment, even when people think we're crazy. Father, we're going to stay focused. So, Father, right now in this place, move. Lord, I thank you for moving in our hearts. I thank you for move, taking that defeat, that despair. Some people walked in this place, our beautiful people walked in this place, and they are defeated. They are just feeling like they're basically just walking in a room, and we can't see where we're going. We feel like we're being just engulfed, not even in a storm, but in a tsunami. God, I thank you right now that you're taking that mess off of us. And Father, we understand that we are going to make it through. We're going to begin to speak to ourselves. We're going, Lord, I thank you that you are shifting our thinking. You're shifting our words that come out of our mouth. Lord, I thank you that you're sending great people into our lives that will encourage us, that will believe in us, that will pray for us. Father, I thank you for revival at Church of the Harvest Fayetteville. And Lord, I thank you that the anointing that I rest in, my husband rests in, that God, every person in this building is going to have it. Lord, we are not going to struggle to pay our bills. We're not going to struggle in our thinking. Lord, we are going to be free and free indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We love you.